Firstly, there's the request that you by two o'clock. Many of you have been looking at it already, and many of you have done it. Um, if you didn't get the email, it was sent to you um, on Wednesday already, right? So that's, uh, that's something you need to check out on. You can post it on the course website as well. Uh, so that's due at 2 o'clock. If you're struggling with question 3, um, a few of you have just come and recently and asked me some stuff. If you're looking at it now, there's a, a, there's a bugging that question. Uh, so that problem won't converge in Simulink with your settings. Uh, so if you can just leave the question as is, you'll get full credit for it. But understand what's going on in the question. So if you've simulated, you'll see that there's a problem. What would you do in practice to fix that problem? So learn from that question. Absolutely, it's my mistake that the numbers in the question uh, lead to a problem that doesn't converge, but you should learn from it. The last question. Yeah, the last question. Yeah, so yeah, that's fine. Okay, so the question won't be graded. You will get full hey, sorry, just a sec. The question will be graded, you get full credit for it, but understand what's gone wrong. So learn from it yourself. Okay. The next part is assignment five is also posted to the website. It's due on Wednesday. Now I realize that there's a short time frame. It's just this week I've not been able to get the assignment out earlier than as I hoped for. So I've made it optional. The assignment's not due for handing, but should you choose to hand it in on Wednesday, you will get graded for it. And what we will do is we'll drop any other assignments that grade is lower. Okay, so if you have a previous assignment or a future assignment that will have a low grade, this way is a way to boost your grade. Okay, so if you choose not to add it in, we'll just ignore this assignment. Is everyone clear on that? Okay, so that's posted on the website as well. No late hand-ins obviously for that one. The reason is because I'm going to post the solutions that same day for you to study for the next one to follow. Okay, so the final announcements, the midterms, the midterms on Thursday evening, it's two hours, it's not an infinite midterm, it's two hours only, and it starts at 6.30, I'll post the venue. Um, is Stephanie Friday covered on the midterm? Like, That's why it's due on Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. Stuff in the assignment is, is it's for your benefit to study it, so um, you can practice it. So let's take a look where we were last time. We were looking at tuning controllers, and we had looked at two ways of tuning the controllers. In the correlations, there's tuning for disturbances and tuning for set point changes. And all of last class was really understanding why those two types of tuning exist. Okay, so that, I'm not, not going to go through that again. What I ended off with last time is showing you what control engineers do in practice. So we found, you will recall, using Dr. Marlin's correlations, Dr. Marlin's correlations look at minimizing the IAD the IAD was defined as the integral of the error. <coughs> we take the absolute value of that, integrate that over the time horizon. Okay, so Dr. Martin's correlations will find you the tuning that gets you minimum error, in addition to a few other criteria. Okay, so we looked at that and then we said, well, if you look at tuning a controller for disturbance changes versus tuning a controller for set point changes, you sometimes get slightly different settings for KC, TI, and T. But most often they're quite similar. So let's go look at what, what control engineers do. Once you get a starting set of tuning, then you go and fine tune. And we started that last time and we said, well, our base case tuning was minus 0.15 for KC, TI was 4.65, we'll recall, TD was 0.96. And when we simulate that, for a disturbance change of one unit, so there's my disturbance occurring at time 40, it's a step input of unit magnitude. That simulation gets me an IAP of 31 units. So we, we showed that last time. Then what a control engineer will do is say, well, let me try and improve IA. I've got three buttons I can change, KC, TI, and TE. And typically, we won't change TE. We will most, go, most often go play with KC and TI. And we did that last time. In fact, what do we do with KC to make IAE decrease? We increase it in terms of magnitude. So 
we go and find something a little more aggressive, minus 0.2. So I'll go greater in magnitude. The sign is always going to stay the same. Let's go a little bit more aggressive. Leave Ti at 4.65, leave Td at 0.96. And we showed last time that if we go do that, minus 0.2. And down here for, as well, so minus 0.2 for Kc that's multiplied by Td. Then we got an IAE of 26 units. Okay, so this is actually better tuning. So this is my best tune so far. Then you can go and try something a little bit more aggressive still. Let's go put in a minus 0.3. Over you know, here, leave KC, uh, sorry, KC at minus 0.3, leave TI at 4.65, leave TD at 0.6. And what you'll see is your IAE goes up to 0.6. That's where we ended off last class. And this is normal. What we see typically if we plot IAB against KC is you'll see something like this. We've got A value of KC here, that's the minimum. If we go a little lower or higher, IAB starts to increase. So there definitely is an optimum KC to be had. In our Dr. Martin's table, told you the optimum KC was minus 0.15, we actually found a slightly better one when we went to minus 0.2. So this is fine tuning. You go and just the table to get you into a ballpark region that you can go fine tune. The table will get you somewhere close by. You can go and explore around here in the bowl to see where that action really is for your process. But that's, this was for disturbances. So this was a simulation where I was only changing the disturbance. Notice here the set point, I've actually removed that wire over there. That signal coming in is zero, so it's essentially said we're not making set point changes. Well, let's go see what happens if we make a set point change now. So I'm going to remove the, the signal there for disturbance, and I'm not going to put a disturbance in anymore. So let's just confirm that what I've done is right. If I run that simulation, I get IAE of zero. That's correct, nothing's changing. I'm not making a step input at the experiments. I'm not making a step input change at the set points, so I'm not making any change, I and E is zero. That's correct. So let's go put a step input over here, run the simulation, and let's take a look at the response. We're making a step, a set point change in the set point at time 10, going from zero to one. We should see that happening at the control variable. The control variable there does that quite nicely, goes from zero to one. A bit of overshoot, but it stabilizes out of one where we expect it. The integral F, absolute error then, is a value of nine. So let's add that to our table here now. So now we're, we're considering set point changes. Kc is minus point two. We use our starting point from where we were before. Ti is at 4.65, that's still at 0 0.96, and now my IAD is 9 units. Okay, so let's just go see what happens if we go up in KC magnitude. So let's try 0 0.25, minus 0 0.25. And now when we run that simulation, so minus 0 0.25, 4.65, 0.96, IE actually got worse. So we worked on an IE of 11 units. <coughs> KC more aggressive led to worse control. So it actually what I've done then is I've gone in the wrong direction. So let me go in the opposite direction. Let's try minus 0.15. <coughs> Now my IAE is at 8.35. <coughs> now IAE is dropped. Notice then actually that these three columns were for set point changes. 
And this is now my optimal control issue. So I'm actually back to where I started off with. So it's essentially telling me that if I want my system to work well for disturbances, I can use this control <coughs> tuning. If I want my system to well work well for set point changes, I can use this control tuning. <coughs> These two tunings are actually not very different. In the big scheme of things, this number of minus 0.15 and minus 0.2 are pretty close to each other. You can click either one and your tuning will work well for both set points and disturbances. Okay, but this approach of controller tuning is what I want you to be clear on. 